Hey, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? Hey, just in case you're joining me for the first time, my name is Brian Glaze Gibbs. This is my story. This is my ministry. Hey, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Brian Glaze Gibbs. Hit that like button for notification. Go check it out. I have a lot of content that's up there. I've been very busy. I'm trying to keep busy. What I want to do is I'm open. I'm open to suggestion. I'm open. Anybody that want to feel free to donate to the channel to basically improve my quality, improve the, the program and the information and the story that I'm putting out, you know, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, donate. You know, the information is all in the description. You know, tonight, what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about right now growing up and how many people that we see. Sometimes when you reflect back upon things and some of the things that you reflect back upon, you always see photos. You see photos of people that you know from your past. And the only thing you constantly seeing, like, are you wondering, like, whatever happened to this guy? Whatever happened to that guy? Or whatever happened to this young lady? Whatever happened to this person or whatever? You know what? And then when you see photos of them and then somebody got up a sign, R.I.P., Rest in peace. We lost a lot of good people over the course of the years. And right now we're some through gun violence, some through, you know, the street life, some through prison, some through disease, some through health issue, mental health, you name it. And we lost people. But, you know, tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about a story that took place. Like, you know, um, some of the individuals that I met. Like, for example, this is my buddy right here. This is Walter King Tut Johnson. Look at it. That's Walter King Tut Johnson on my right and my man Nubs on my left. And right now is me and Tut. Like I say, anybody know the story about me and Tut? We grew up together. We grew up in Cypress Hills. Like I met Tut when I was in the sixth grade. We moved into the same building in 1975 when me and my family moved from the Bedford Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn to the East New York section of Brooklyn, the Cypress Hill Project. And just so happened, me and Tut happened to live in that same building. And, you know, in a roundabout way, we had a fight at school and we wound up becoming like the best of friends. Um, as time went on and we started like getting involved in different things, I think I went away first. I went away from 81 to 1984 for a robbery beep. And Tut went away, I like to say 82, 83. And he came home in like 1985 or whatever. But anyway, right now was like when he came back out or whatever and everybody got into their own little private world, um, he introduced me to this guy. You know what I'm saying? Right now, he introduced me to this guy and this is the guy he introduced me to. Unique. Unique. Unique was from, I guess, like Linden Houses, the boulevard. He had a barber shop right there in that area, right across from Linden Houses or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it was Unique and his people. You know, good guy. Like I said right now, was me and him never didn't really have any problem. This is Brother Muss. Okay? This is Brother Muss. So anyway, right now was like when I met Unique through Tut, you know, I, I, I guess like we was in friend. We just more or less like dealt with each other when we seen each other on a mutual respect because of the friend Tut. You know, Tut was, you know, my man and Tut was his man. So, you know, um, as time went on, you know, like I said right now, was, um, I think Tut was away at the time. And what wound up happening was, um, like I say, you know, Unique was doing his thing. I was doing my thing back and forth from Brooklyn. Um, two queens, you know, I was down with like the Lorenzo Fat Cat Nichols organization. Then I had my crew, Eminem, Money and Murder. And just so happened right down where it's like, um, you know, Unique, his younger brother, you know what I'm saying, um, Musk, this brother right here. So what happened was like, I guess like Musk, you know, you know, his big brother was Unique. So Unique was big and they, you know, they neighborhood. He was that, you know, I guess, quote unquote, the man in that little area or whatever. So just so happened right now was, I guess, Musk. Like, you know, what I'm saying like, you know, ran into some guys from Cyprus and, you know, for some reason, I don't know what happened during that particular time. But I guess what must start doing must stop, you know, talking trash. And then basically right now is my name came up and he started talking trash about me. And I don't know what he felt at the time, like, you know, probably like, you know, he thought he could say it and get away with it or whatever because of who his brother was. You know, once again, this is his big brother. You need. OK, Unique had a little, you know, he was making money. He had his little crew or whatever. So just so happened right now is, you know, that time went on and, you know, a few cats came back to me, young guys. You know, he came back to me. Oh, man, we ran into Musk. We was hanging out with Musk and Musk was talking trash about you or whatever. 
I'm like, huh? I'm saying right now, and the cat really don't really know me. Like I said right now, he know me, his brother's somewhat cool. So why in the hell would this individual be talking trash about me? I didn't understand it. I couldn't get it. I couldn't grasp and put my hands on it or whatever. So just so happened right now with, you know, and don't get me wrong. I barely see this kid. So just so happened, as luck would have it, I ran into Mr. Musk. And right now was what I did was I had a heart to heart with him. And I went to him. I said, listen, man. I don't know you, you know what I'm saying? I just know you're a unique brother or whatever, you're his younger brother. I said, you don't know me. And I'm telling you, all due to respect, you know what I'm saying? Going forward, keep my name out of your mouth. That's all. I'm saying right now is because I said, I'm giving you a courtesy. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to let you go this time. But I'm saying, I let must know. I said, listen, man, the next time I hear you speaking ill, are disrespectful about me, then right now, me and you're gonna have a problem. And basically, I don't give a damn who your brother are. You know what I'm saying? I, your brother can be, uh, I, I'm saying, John Gotti. It don't make me no different. The next time that you put my name in your mouth and you're being disrespectful, guess what? I'm gonna make sure that be the last time you mention my name. So, long story short, you know what I'm saying? Period. I say what I say, you know, and I meant what I say, and I left it as that. So next thing you know, like a few days later, um, I get a page. And right now, I respond back to the page, call the person back. And once again, it was Unique. So Unique called me up. And he said, yo, man, you know, right now he pays me. I call him back. He said, yo, man, we got to talk, man. We got to talk. You know what I'm saying, period, man? Like, you know, um, you push up on my brother, man. You know, I didn't appreciate that or whatever. You know what I'm saying, period. Okay, cool. So no problem. I don't got no problem with that. So at the present time, I told him where I was at. I was at my Cypress Hill Lawn um, Headquarters, 1266 Sutter Avenue, apartment 4B. I said, listen, come come see me or whatever. So anyway, right now, long story short, he knew. I guess got in his car, him and his one of his buddies, and they came to see me. They came to my Cypress Headquarters. So just so happened right now, I casually, you know what I'm saying, met him, went downstairs, went in the Cypress lobby. So it was just me, you know what I'm saying, um, unique, and one of his men. It was just me. Nobody else with me. I didn't need nobody. Trust me, I didn't have no gun. I didn't have anything. So anyway, right now is we got into a discussion. He said, yo, Blaze, come on, man. We're supposed to be cool, man. And you disrespect my little brother. I said, yo, Unique, listen, it's not that I disrespect your little brother. Your brother was going around talking shit about me. And right now is what I did was I checked him and let him know, listen, all due to respect, keep my name out your mouth. You don't know me. Right now, we don't have no business. So you don't have no reason whatsoever to put my name into your mouth. So only thing I told him out of courtesy, out of respect to you and our relationship on a strip of tut, I gave him a bye. But I did let him know the next time that he mentioned my name, guess what? It's going to be hell to pay. Yo, Glaze, man, that's my brother, man. You can't do that. No, you can't tell me what I can and what I cannot do, man. I'm saying, I'm telling you, I left it alone. I checked him. Put him in his place and let him know to keep my name out of his mouth. So in a long story short, I guess he didn't like that. And right now, whereas, you know, like, you know, well, I don't agree with that. What is there that you don't agree with? The key is, like I tell you right now, it's me. If he keep my name out of his mouth, we won't have no problem. OK, so I think, like I said, we start going back and forth and I can see he disliked what I was saying, but I was not backing down. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not strapped. Unique and obviously his man, they got to be strapped. They come into my neighborhood. They come into my area. They come into my headquarters. They come to see me. So to me, it's not like, you know, like I tell you, I didn't do nothing to the kid. Only thing I did is I made sure I plant the living fear in him, told him, keep my name out your mouth. And once again, like I told you, me and Unique went back and forth. And like I said right now, I can see that he didn't like what I was saying based upon expression movement and his, and his, his, his expression on his face and his body language. But at the same time, it didn't phase me one way or another. So to the degree, like I think to the degree, he was like thinking like, damn, man, look, man, I might have to do something right now. You know, but like I told you, they was right. To me, I didn't have shit on me or whatever. So I think they felt confident about that, that they could have did something and get away with it. And just so happened during that conversation, like five of my guys just came back to the headquarters. And basically, it was probably like, you know what I'm saying, um, coming to drop off money, pick up more product, and go back out. So when they came into, like, the Cypress headquarters, and most of the time my guys come in the building, they already got the Uzi out. They already got the weapons out, ready to go, being prepared for everything, because there's no defense for them as a surprise. So now, here it is. When they come into the hallway, 
And right now, they see me and they see these other two guys and automatically they get on guard. Yo, what's up, man? What's going on here, man? Nothing. I said right now, I got everything under control. Nothing. So they standing there for a while with everything drawn. And I had to convince them, look, everything is all right. Everything is good. What I need you to do at this present time, go upstairs, handle the business and go from there. So even with that being said, I said, oh, my guys, that was on. Like right now, they ready to go. And I sent them upstairs to finish conducting business. And that blew unique in his man mind because automatically they look at it. Damn, the way the conversation was going. And it seemed like they wanted to, like, you know, make a move or so. And when they see, like, all of a sudden, it wasn't planned. That's the way things was going on. Like, you know, here it is. Like, you know, timing is everything. So just so happened, my guys got back. And when they got back, and right now is, we in the hallway, and the situation looked like kind of heated or whatever, but yet and still, that's how much confident. Or even right now is, that's probably how foolish I was at the time. Because even then, I, you know, I, and I can honestly, as I sit back and think about it now, I had a death wish, and I didn't know it. It's like right now is, at one point in time, I thought I was invincible. I'm talking about, I'm talking to these individuals knowing that, you know, I was about to slap the living daylight of his little brother, but I didn't, but I gave him a buy on the strength. So now when we got in that heated argument down in the staircase in the hallway, like they got the, he, he know they got the odds, but I wasn't worried about that. It's not the point that I was underestimate them, but it's like right now is, okay, I, I feel it was nothing during that period of time that came my way that I couldn't handle. And, you know, like the long story short, like once I sent my guys upstairs, you know, and like I say, unique in his man, they was like kind of amazed. And basically right now they kind of like squash it. Because you no know, honest, you like, I got you if I really wanted you. That just show you it's not all about that. You know, just because you got power or just because you're in control at the present time, you can't react off of everything and you can't allow that power to go to your head. And that's what I'm saying is right now what I think what happened with his brother. His brother was no different, Musk, may they so rest in peace, was no different than Cat Nephew Tyrone. You know, because his uncle, Fat Cat, had power, unique, you know what I'm saying, little brother Musk. Felt like you say he had power and he was living basically off his big brother. You know what I'm saying? Unique. And he felt that, you know what, a lot of times he probably got out of situation or basically did what he wanted to do in that area on the strength of his brother. But just so happened when I approach him and I let him know, all due respect, keep my name out your mouth. And next time I catch my name in your mouth, guess what's going to happen? We're going to have problems. I don't give a damn who your brother is. It can be John Gotti. It can be whoever. King Kong. It didn't make no difference. Only I'm asking you, one man to another man, keep my name out your mouth. And like I told you right now, was you know once me and Neat, you know settled that, there was no more problem. But right now, I think like what he like lies like, damn, he thought he had me. And then right now was he saw how fast that table turned. And it wasn't all about that. Like I say, I was not worrying about any situation because like I told you, we had respect for one another. We had a bond. And that bond was based upon, like I say, you know, my relationship and tut relationship and Nuz relationship. That's how I met Unique in the first place. So to me, like the moral story, people know your place. The more your story, I don't care who you are, what you are, never underestimate your opponent, never live off somebody else's reputation or whatever. It's all about respect. Whether you like a person, whether you don't like a person, as long as you respect that person, you know, whether you're right or wrong, they don't have no other choice but to respect you back. A lot of things could be avoided. It all depends upon how we deal with the situation. Once again, temper is what gets us into trouble. Pride is what keep us there. And like to me, like I said right now, was regardless of what, that's why I always try to conduct myself in a certain manner to resolve situation. You know, it's easy to pull a trigger, but once you pull that trigger, it's no coming back from that. My name is Brian Glaze Gibbs. This is my ministry. You know what I'm saying? Email me in order to get your signed copy of this book. The Beyond Lucky, the Brian Glaze Gibbs story, a true story of change and redemption. If I, the one they call Brian Glaze Gibbs can change, Anybody can change. Why people could change come from within. Like my story, what I'm going to talk about, the good, the bad, the ugly. This is the blueprint. This is the blueprint. If utilized properly, it can stop your children, my children, future generation to stop making that multi-billion dollar prison system their permanent address. Get them to understand that crime doesn't pay. Do it right the first time. I am Brian Glace Gibbs. Sign it off. You know, check me out. Email me, Bryant Gibbs 1201 at yahoo.com.